I greet you in hall, the Lord's holy name. We are so happy that uh, we could uh, have the Bible study from the book of Colossians in this week. I request uh, uh, Sister Sylvia, I hope she could uh, get internet connection. I requested her to lead us in the opening prayer. Sister Sylvia is a professor in Tutukarin. Yes. Sana, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you clearly. Sana, can you hear me now? Ah, yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time. Lord, you have given this uh, uh, the most unfavorable situation. You have given us a very good time of uh, uh, Bible study, reading your word of God and how to interpret it. We give uh, billion to your hands, Lord. You teach us to, through him how we have to learn uh, your word, your words. Especially now we are going to start with the book of Colossians. You lead us in um, with your light, Lord. The Lord, you just uh, speak through Billion and you uh, give him all strength to uh, share whatever he has prepared. You, uh, uh, I pray for all the people and thank you for all the people who have come to this uh, Bible study and you give uh, light to each of us. We pray in the name of uh, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, sister. For this thank, prayer. You. thank you. I welcome each and every one of you for this uh, big Bible study. A special word of welcome to uh, friends who are joining for the first time. I could see that uh, scripture in Shafaka by Dinesh from Mumbai has joined and along with some of the friends. And uh, I sincerely thank others who are encouraging new friends to join in this Bible study. I welcome each one of you for this Bible study. During this lockdown period, it's our privilege that we can spend one hour in Lord's presence in studying God's word. I consider it a real privilege of studying God's word along with you. I'm so much excited and I'm so much encouraged by the way in which I receive response from you. In fact, it motivates me to consider studying all the 66 books like this with you. So I thank uh, each one of you for your keen interest in studying God's word. It's sad that some of our friends could not join, maybe because of their busy schedule in the studies, or some of them, they already started working, and some of them are finding it difficult with uh, the internet problem. Even I saw that uh, one uh, student from Bangalore U has joined, and then she, she is not in a position to continue, maybe because of the internet uh, problem. So, but uh, I'm happy that uh, my friends could put it in the YouTube so that others uh, could uh, watch this uh, or hear these messages in the YouTube. I sincerely thank Vadivel, Prahash and Johnny for helping me in this uh, wonderful ministry of sharing God's word along with you. Every week we take uh, a book and study. Last week, I was so much excited to teach from the book of Ruth. The Lord has really ministered to me. And uh, this week, as we were thinking of what next, I had a desire to do it uh, from the book of Deuteronomy. But uh, some of the friends suggested, why, do, why don't you take uh, smaller books like Colossians? In that way, I'm grateful to God for my dear friends uh, who are standing with me and constantly helping and praying for me. And that led me to take the book of uh, Colossians. There are three objectives I have noted, noted down for this study. Number one, it's a lovely book. We, we can learn many, many precious lessons from the book of Colossians. I clearly remember 20 years back, I was teaching in a USITN Bible seminar from the book of Colossians. After that, I was so much excited in teaching and I have learned precious lessons from the book of Colossians. So we are going to learn, I want to relearn 
uh, from this book. Second one, clearly I'm differentiating between the lessons from Colossians and this uh, important topic, that is the supremacy of Christ. That is the main message of the book of Colossians. In these days, I feel that the church, the Christians, should relearn or to have to go back to the main message of uh, uh, Colossians, that is on supremacy of Christ. We are going to look at every day, uh, one or other way, about the supremacy of Christ. That's the reason I'm just mentioning that to reaffirm our faith in the supremacy of Christ, it's going to help. Thirdly, I want to see that uh, you'll be really excited so that, uh, like me, you also will be happy to teach from the book of Colossians wherever you get an opportunity, maybe in a small groups or in your own fellowship groups and in your family prayers and things like that. And uh, definitely, uh, the book of Colossians is a lovely book for us to study. It's one of the present letters. When we looked at uh, the book of uh, Philippians, we have seen that when Paul was there in the prison, in Acts 28, verses 30 and 31, we read that uh, two years he was there. He was under arrest, but he had a freedom to meet people. And during that time, he has written four letters, Colossians, Ephesians, Philemon, and Philippians are known as the prison letters. When we looked at uh, Philippians, we saw that uh, Philippians is little different than the other three letters. That means Colossians, Ephesians, and Philemon were evidently written about the same time and under the same circumstances. Philemon was native of uh, uh, Colossae. God willing, next week we'll be studying that book. And uh, Ephesians and Colossians, uh, definitely there are many, many uh, parallels we can look at. That's the reason almost all the Bible scholars uh, believe that uh, the three books were written in the same time and in the same circumstances. The city of Colossae, I want to acknowledge uh, my son's body well for uh, bringing this uh, two lovely maps. Uh, we are going to see this. And uh, here we see that Colossae is part of Asia Minor. And uh, present day Turkey. It is about 100 uh, miles away from Ephesus. Ephesus was, uh, Ephesus is in uh, the port city, but Colossae is a uh, little away, 100 miles away from that one. And uh, Colossae, uh, Laodicea, and Heropolis, all three cities uh, are joined together. In Paul's time, Colossae was quite famous, but little later, Laodicea has become, and uh, even Heropolis also becoming prominent compared to Colossae. When you look at this map, you can immediately remember uh, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, where God gave vision to John, the apostle, about the seven churches mission for the seven churches. That's a different study. Maybe a little longer we will have to take to study the book of Revelation. And the seven cities are here and Laodicea is part of that. And Colossae is not there. In that way, by John's time itself, Laodicea has become a prominent one compared to Colossae. This line is connecting east and west. And it's a trade route. In that way, it became a very important place for uh, people to stay and to have business. And that leads us to an important point. There are many types of philosophers uh, mingled in this cosmopolitan area. In second chapter, we are going to look at uh, the main aspect of this uh, uh, purpose of this book, that is, uh, to educate the church at Colossae to be careful, to be protected from all kinds of philosophers. Basically because 
the circumstances are like that. Even now, we know that we know our context and the church in that context should know the um, challenges we receive from our neighborhood. For that book of Colossae, especially chapter 2, is a very important one. The church at Colossae, it was not established by Paul. How do we know that? In chapter 2, verse 1, it says very clearly, Paul could write saying that, I haven't seen you face to face. If it is not uh, in person, definitely it is somebody who started this, uh, established this church and Paul got a message. Second thing is, in the book of Acts, we don't know anything about the church at Colossae. When Paul had three missionary journeys, Colossae was not part of that trip. So we know that Colossae was, the church at Colossae was not established by Paul. In that case, how it has happened in Acts chapter 19 and was chapter 20, we read about Paul's ministry in Ephesus. In fact, when he was talking to the elders of the Ephesus church in chapter 20, he says, three years with tears, I was ministering in your place. That means Paul had a powerful ministry in the city of Ephesus. And there he had a contact with Epaphras and Philemon. And uh, the history says, Epaphras and Philemon were from Colossae. They were touched by the ministry of uh, Paul. They were converted. They went back to their own city, Colossae, and started their ministry. How do we know that? In Coloss Colossians chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, we clearly see that uh, Epaphras is the one who shared the gospel with his Christians. The church was established because of the hearing of the gospel from Epaphras. And in Philemon, we see that the church was meeting and uh, they were in Colossae. And about five years later, they received this letter from Paul because Epaphras might have gone to Rome to meet Paul. And from there, he brought this letter. That's the way we have to understand the background of the church at Colossae. The main theme of this letter is uh, highlighted here in the last sentence, the complete adequacy of Christ as contrasted with the emptiness of mere human philosophy. The church was affected with human philosophies. We are going to look at a little later. And Paul could clearly say, in Christ we are sufficient. All sufficient Christ is with you. The supreme, uh, supremacy of Christ is very important for your belief and for your conduct. That's the main message and that's the theme of this uh, book. And the background of this book is basically, people call it as a friendly letter. Those of you with me in the book of uh, Philippians, we know that it was a joyful letter. That's what we studied. Paul could write about joy. Though he was sitting in prison, he talked about joy and he encouraged them to be rejoicing. But here, he hasn't met this church people. So he wanted to write a friendly letter. At the same time, he wanted to encourage them to be loyal to the faith in God. In fact, Epaphras brought the news about this church to Paul in Rome. He says, there are some troubles in our church. Basically, the people around are teaching different top, uh, doctrines. <coughs> they say that uh, along with Christ, you need to have other things. It was just a beginning. It was not grown so big. That's the reason Paul could write, prevention is better than cure. 
So he wanted to warn this church to be careful about their wrong philosophies going around in that uh, church. People call it as a Colossian heresy because there are many different wrong teachings are given. There could be many. I'm just highlighting eight points and uh, there we see that uh, <coughs> attacked their total adequacy and uniqueness of supremacy of Christ. What does it mean? There are people, they say that it's good that you talk about Jesus Christ. It's very right. But don't stop there. You need to have extras. And even today, we can clearly understand in our Indian context, people accept Jesus Christ as one among the gods. And they say that it's okay. And uh, along with uh, Jesus, we want to worship other gods in case if they are also true, the mission on wisdom. So we like to keep Jesus as one among the gods. Don't simply say that Jesus is uh, the only way. Even among Christians, there are some liberal theologians, even some pastors could say that uh, when a Hindu is a good, good Hindu, when a Muslim is a good Muslim, just don't disturb them. Allow them to be a good person. And don't talk about Jesus is the only way. That's very sad. For them, the supremacy of Christ is not accepted. Another group, they talk about Jesus as divine. Nothing to do with the humanness. People like uh, Jesus only group. And uh, another group called Jehovah Witnesses, they say that Jesus was very human. Even you can read from John's Gospel and other places, he was very much depending on God and he was away from God. Then he became Messiah. So they talk too much about humanness. That heresy was growing. Other people, they were giving importance to astrological elements, thinking of date and time stars even now it is there some of them don't want to do anything on tuesday or friday a saturday because somehow they feel that saturday is uh, committed for saturn oh no and some of us uh, we could see that uh, our friends are not happy with number in case if they want to get a registration number for the car or two-wheeler they don't want any uh, number which is uh, not good for them. Some of them don't like eight at all. And uh, you know that most of our friends don't like number 13. In some of the hotels, they don't have the room number 13 because in case if you go there and in, if you are going to stay in room number 13, uh, your visit will not be useful. So they want to have as a 12A. Next to 12, that won't be 13, that will be 12A and then it will go to 14. Look at that, even Christians, look at time, date and place and things like that, uh, connecting with astrological elements. De demonic spirits, and later we see that angelic worships, they were thinking of uh, uh, the spirits behind us, both in the negative sense and in positive sense. Some of them are worshiping angels and some of them are thinking of demonic spirits. That's a uh, heresy was very much uh, prevalent. And uh, for them, they say that you have to try to please that also. Above all, chapter two verse eight is very important. There Paul says very clearly, the philosophical elements involved in the wrong heresy in the church at Colossae. God willing, today's letter, we are going to look at that verse, the philosophical elements. Along with that, chapter 2, verse 16 and 21, we see that uh, there's a talk uh, about uh, people who are taking, don't eat this, don't touch this, that type of uh, outward things. For them, 
body is bad spirit is good so do all sorts of uh, uh, attack on your body and unnecessary uh, pain on my body will help me to be released of my spirit wrong type of teaching and last one was chapter, chapter 1 verse 28 we see that uh, the spiritual and intellectual arrogance they think of wisdom is so supreme and they thought jesus is less than our own intellectual understanding and to them paul says jesus is above of every other things that's the reason i took time to tell you about the colossian heresy there are too many things which really disturbed the christians and even the church my dear brothers and sisters even today i wanted you to take note of it i don't know uh, in your context whether your church is struggling or whether your friends are struggling but in my context i could say that there are many christians in even some evangelicals are affected by this uh, type of heretical thinking and they are known as christians they even they are known as believers but the heresy uh, has really put them down their faith their love is shaken so we are warned at the same time we are encouraged to warn our fellowship members and our church members if they are in a uh, cut up with this type of heresy the broad outline uh, of this book normally we do it in the beginning as i said uh, i'm excited to study from different uh, commentators i referred many commentaries i could come out with this three type of three different type of outlines very easy outline is first part is doctrine second part is practical that's what we look at paul's writing the doctrinal part is the supremacy of christ chapter 1 and chapter 2 the practical part submission to christ chapter 3 and chapter 4 another commentators is extending first part into two paragraphs doctrines the christ prominence a preeminence is declared christ preeminence is declared in chapter 1 the danger is christ preeminence defended the danger is there and paul is defending christ preeminence that is chapter 2 chapter 3 and chapter 4 talks about duty that is christ preeminence demonstrated in a personal and community living little differently we can see that chapter 1 verses 1 to 14 is an introduction chapter 1 verses 15 to chapter 2 verse 7 is a supremacy of christ and paul's ministry chapter 2 verse 8 to 23 talks about freedom from human regulations chapter 3 verse 1 to chapter 4 verse 6 rules for holy living personally and in the family and in the society conclusion is chapter 4 verses 7 to 18 in that way there are many possible ways of uh, bringing the outlines i could go on with other outlines as i do it normally i want to put it in seven paragraphs or we can add some more numbers in our paragraphs but let me highlight this uh, seven paragraphs chapter 1 verses 1 to 14 is thanksgiving and prayer clearly it comes as one paragraph otherwise you can make it as two paragraphs 1 to 8 and 9 to 14 supremacy of christ is highlighted in chapter 1 verses 15 to 23 you remember in philippians we studied in chapter 2 Verses 5 to 11 is a beautiful poem on Christology or about Christ. I told you that when you, whenever you think of Philippians, you cannot afford to miss it. Chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Same thing in Colossians, you cannot afford to miss chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. That leads us to an important point. He says, Jesus is the gospel and for the gospel, I am committed for my ministry. Paul could say that my part in God's plan, chapter 1, verse 24 to chapter 2, verse 7. 
that could be the third paragraph fourth one warning against fault teachings there are three clear cut warnings we will look at little later and uh, that's a one paragraph i was just highlighting fifth paragraph chapter 3 verses 1 to 11 lovely passage newness in life newness in life that leads us to the sixth paragraph that is when you have the newness in christ you need to be part of a new community christian community in the society and also at home how we have to behave last paragraph chapter 4 verses 2 to 18 that talks about christian witness and service when we look at this whole book i really want you to make note of this chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 for in christ all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form and in christ you have been brought to fullness he is the head over every power and authority he is the head over every power and authority you remember in romans chapter 1 verse 17 is a key verse and here chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 are the key verses it opens the whole book there are various ways of studying the book of colossians i am excited to suggest the book study is very good two days back i was talking to one of our student leaders he was excited to have personal bible study books i told him what i am doing taking one book for four days four hours it is not at all a good idea and i encouraged him take one month or even two months to study one book for your personal bible study so take one book and have a thorough study for your personal uh, purpose, personal bible study that's a very good uh, uh, discipline along with that you can do other type of bible studies also character study ffrs is classic already we have studied in one of our classes word study take the word fullness in a beautiful way paul highlights different uh, connotations for this word or different perspectives he is talking about fullness is a lovely word verse study take one verse like 316 or 46 and have a personal study of that particular verse passage study it's a lovely passage you cannot afford to miss it chapter 3 verses 12 to 14 i wish that you will be excited to study that passage one of my very very favorite passages in the scriptures chapter 3 verses 12 to 14 long back when i attended a, a seminar in pune we had three day seminar and all the three days we studied only these three verses that was a great experience colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 14 chapter study chapter 3 is lovely and comparative study i really want you to be excited to study uh colossians by comparing with ephesians the only difference between colossians and ephesians is colossians is talking about the supremacy of christ ephesians is talking about the church at Uh, as a body of christ ephesians is giving importance to the body and colossians is giving the importance to the head okay let's hear god's word and i requested uh, dear danny from tinnervale st john's college student he will be reading the first paragraph chapter 1 verses 1 to 8 and uh, sister prasi a phd scholar from uh, sagar uh, eu he will be reading the second paragraph danny oh thank you uncle yes. am i audible yes yes sir danny oh, okay uncle uh, reading the epistle of the paul the apostle to the colossians from the nkj version paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god and timothy our brother to the saints and faithful brethren in christ who are in colossae grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
praying always for you since we heard of your faith in jesus christ i feel love for the, all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel which has come to you as it was also in the, all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it also among you since the day you heard and in the grace of god in truth as you also ran from the purpose our dear fellow servant who is the faithful minister of Christ of Christ on your behalf for to declare to us your love in the spirit thank, thank you, you danny thank you yeah uncle shall I, shall I continue yes sir blessing yeah uh, reading from colossians chapter 1 9 to 14 for this reason since the day we heard about you we have not stopped praying for you and asking god to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the lord and may please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work growing in the knowledge of god being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins thank you danny and blessy for this lovely reading i appreciate that when we look at this passage we can easily divide this passage into three paragraphs first two verses talk about the greetings that's a regular uh, pattern of paul's writing who writes and to whom it is written and with a greeting here in this passage we see that uh, paul could clearly say that by the will of god i am an apostle of christ jesus it is a very important phrase we have to make note the will of god by the will of god my dear brothers and sisters it is not only for a pastor or a full time worker they have to say that it is will of god all of us as a child of god we need to be in the center of god's will somebody has said very nicely that is uh, the the safest place for a believer is being in the center of god's will the safest place for a believer is to be in the will of god so hear me it is not only for full time workers all of us have to consider will of god seriously Paul could say that I became an apostle because of the will of God. It's not because of my choice, or it's not that uh, I'm interested to do something. It's because of the will of God. And it's uh, lovely to see that he takes Timothy, his brother, or his spiritual son, as part of his team. That shows his humility. He could have very well write on his own. but constantly in all his epistles we see that uh, paul could com- combine timothy and others as part of his uh, co-author of this letter to whom it is written to the saints and faithful brethren in christ when we look at the word brethren we know that both brothers and sisters are included and uh, the saints and faithful bro- god's people and to those who are in colosse and already we have looked at uh, the greetings when we looked at uh, the book of uh, philippians grace to you and peace from god our father grace is for the christians who are coming from greek background they are excited to hear the word gra- grace and people who have come from hebrew background for them the peace is very important in that way grace and peace are constantly mentioned by paul when he writes a letter combining both the christians coming from gentile background and also from jewish background verses 3 to 8 we see that paul is giving thanks god 
thanking God for great things he heard about uh, the church at Colossae. I have just highlighted uh, four important points and uh, we can see this. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints. Your faith in Christ and your love for God's people. Faith and love should go together. We cannot say that I have faith in God, but I cannot love people. Faith and love should go together. It's not only here, even to the church at Thessalonica. He clearly writes, Paul could clearly write, I appreciate your faith and love. We need to constantly check our Christian life in the light of faith and love. Can we confidently say that our faith in God is helping us to love our brothers and sisters in the church, in our community, in the fellowship? If uh, I say that I cannot love my brothers and sisters, but I have faith, that's not very useful. That's what, he's, that's what John writes in his first epistles. How true it is, Paul could highlight both faith and love should go together. And he talks about the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel gives a hope. The hope comes from power of the gospel. When we hear the gospel, our life are transformed. By faith, we accepted Jesus as our personal savior. And the Spirit of God pours us love in our heart. That's what we looked at in John, Romans 5th chapter. It's a reality in a believer's life. And that hope is uh, not wasted. The gospel has a power in us. The hope is growing in us. That's what he's telling in verse 5 and 6. Verse 7, he says he's connecting the gospel with a minister, that is Epaphras. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow bond servant, who is a faithful servant of Christ on your behalf. That means he is part of you. That's what he mentions. And he also informed us of your love in the spirit. So that so shows very clearly, chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, he says that uh, Ephaphras is the one who shared the gospel with you and you got the hope and because of the hope, you have faith and love. And he is the one who brought the message about your love in the spirit. That's a lovely uh, character study we had about this gentleman. These two verses, and in fourth chapter, verses 12 and 13, four verses talk about the whole letter from the character of Epaphras. That's the reason I told you that if you want to do a character study, you have to go back and look at our character study, with what we did on Epaphras. And even today, I wanted to highlight uh, the ministry of Epaphras. We studied earlier, but for those of our friends who are joined later in our Bible study fellowship, I just wanted to tell you that uh, the life and ministry of Epaphras was so great. The one who was blessed by the gospel went back to his place and did something for the glory of God and for the extension of God's kingdom. Are we doing it? That's a question we need to ask. What he did he shared the gospel with others so that the fellowship could start and later it became a church. And the faith in God and also the love for one another has grown because of this man. Not only that, he went back to Paul and shared the joyful experience of his ministry 
and he became a bridge between the church and Paul. Though Paul did not meet them, he has written a lovely letter, which is a blessing for us. That's all because of one man, Epaphras. Even today, in our life and in our ministry, are we concerned about others? Are we standing between others? Are we taking efforts to introduce people? And uh, we need to stand like a bridge between a servant of God, the pastor, and our own church members. And in our fellowship, we need to take every effort to be like a forest. And in fourth chapter, we read about his intercession and about prayer, and it's very meaningful. I wish that uh, once again, we will look at the character of Epaphras and be excited to do the ministry which is given by our God to us. Each one of us have different type of gifts. Each one of us have different type of ministries. I don't expect all of you to be like Epaphras, but I want you to be a minister of God wherever God has kept you. You should be a minister of the gospel. That leads Paul to have a very meaningful prayer for the church. We look at the prayer filled with words, but we can clearly see that uh, three important points are coming out in this prayer. My brothers and sisters, when you are asked to pray for others, mostly we pray that, Lord, you bless them. That's a word we use very commonly. Maybe we can use it very meaningfully. Lord, bless them in every aspect of it, in the spiritual life, in the physical and in their emotional life, and bless them economically. Like that we can pray. But when you look at false prayer, we see that he is using different types of words. That's another thing this evening I wanted to share with you. How is our prayer for others. Look at the prayer. Sister Blessie has read for us. For this reason, also since the day we heard of it from Ephaphras about you, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Clearly, he says, I, we really wish that you will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. I told you that uh, Paul could say that it's because of will of God he became an apostle. And now he's praying for all the members of the church that they'll be filled with the knowledge of God's will. My dear brothers and sisters, I don't know what is a present day context of your, when you think of your future, when you think of your marriage, when you think of a job, when you think of your high studies, when you think of your transfer, anything for that matter, allow God to reveal his plan for your life. Let it be done according to the will of God. Not only in major matters like our job, our career and our marriage, even in our day-to-day uh, -day living, we need to constantly think of whether I am pleasing the Lord, whether I am fulfilling the will of God in my life. And he says, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, you need to do it. That's what we looked at, the heresy. Those people are talking about wisdom. They're the, those people are talking about the experiences. But he says, it's all in the wisdom of God. The knowledge of God should really help you to uh, be above than the worldly wisdom and knowledge. Secondly, he talks about the practical obedience. He says, you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In the knowledge of his will 
and here he says you live out the knowledge of god through your life please him in all respects and be a fruitful christian in a good work increasing in the knowledge my brothers and sisters that should be the longing of our life i can be known as a uh, evangelical i can be known as a christian i can be known as a disciple of lord jesus christ how is my practical obedience look at the words phrases walk in the manner worthy of the lord to please him and bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god that's a prayer for all of us in this evening this should be the practical uh, way in which we need to live out thirdly he talks about the moral excellence in terms of strengthen with all power according to his glorious might for attaining of all steadfastness and patience joylessly and he talks about the character in patience joy steadfastness all come here we need to attain that with the power of god my dear brothers and sisters whenever we use this word power normally we think of power to show it in action i want to have power when i pray somebody will be healed i want to have power uh, if i can reveal the mysteries of god to others i want to have power and something like a great power i want to have but here he says according to his glorious might you will be strengthened with all power for what to attain all steadfastness patience and joy how much we need to long for power my brothers and sisters it's nothing wrong in uh, reminding uh, again and again i really want to see that the power is exhibited in our love in our humility in our patience in our bearing even when you are looking at the third chapter we are going to look at the same point later we all need power to forgive others oh my it's very difficult i can forget about the past but forgiving forgiving others is very difficult so i need a real power from god to forgive others i need to uh, have power to have patience steadfast constantly depending on god and growing in my christian life i need power and the joy definitely i need power my brothers and sisters even in this evening i do not know in which uh, uh, situation we are in in some of the areas we need power all of us need power that's a constant prayer we need to think of uh, god's uh, uh, power not outward things inward things in our inner being if we have this power naturally god will show it in uh, our actions so that in the fruits we can show the power of god that leads us to the important point verse 13 and 14 for he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transformed us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins i really want you to keep this one so that tomorrow we are going to look at the supremacy of christ the beautiful passage chapter 1 verses uh, 15 onwards it's a connection paul is praying for them when he was praying he says god has rescued us from the domain of the darkness and transformed us to the kingdom of his beloved son lord jesus christ in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins so we will wait where we are going to look at the supremacy of christ very well connected and today we looked at uh, three important points paul being the will of god he is blessing his people 
and when he is talking about uh, the Christians, the saints, or the faithful believers in the church, he talks about the faith and love and the power of the gospel and the minister of the gospel. Then he's praying for them very, very meaningfully. That leads us to the last uh, uh, point about our personal reflection. What about our faith, love, and hope? We ourselves know about our faith and love and hope. Sometimes it's very high, sometimes it's very low, and sometimes we have only faith, but we don't have love. And when we think of the future of hope, we find it difficult. Maybe we need to check ourselves. I told you, Ephesus had a great ministry in the church at Colossae. In our present day context, God has kept each one of us in our place to be a minister of God, one way or other. Not necessarily you'll be a full-time worker, but definitely you are a minister of God. And just find out what is your ministry and how best you're doing it like Ephesus in your own context. Third one is very important. Am I meaningfully intercede for others? I pray for myself. I pray for my needs. I pray for my studies. I pray for my future. I pray for various needs of my family. My, mine, myself. Only all my prayers are connected with these three. My, mine, and myself. When you intercede for others, are you genuinely concerned? Otherwise, even somebody has asked, when it was last that you cried for others when you, when you are in prayer? We need to intercede for others. And Paul, when he did it, he did it very meaningfully. Not using simply, Lord protect them, Lord bless them. It should be more than that. If it is so, how we can improve our prayer life? How we can improve interceding for others? To begin with, we have to have a prayer diary. Note down the names and prayer concerns. Write down the very specific prayer request. And go to God in your personal prayers. And join with others and pray. Intercede. And use meaningful words in your prayer when you pray for others. We need to improve, definitely, our own prayer life. I need to improve, and all of us have to improve our prayer life. Then God can bless our prayers. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this lovely book. We thank you, Lord, for the way in which Paul could write to the friends whom he hasn't met. Even today, as we looked at the life of Epaphras, when we looked at the great life of uh, the Colossian believers, we lack in some of the areas. Sometimes our life and ministry is going up and down. Forgive me and forgive us, O oh God. Even when we think of our prayer life, we are not eagerly praying, interceding for others. Forgive me and forgive us, O oh God. And give us a spirit of interceding for others. Many a times we did a mistake of praying for others. Lord protect them and Lord bless them. And even today as we have learned the wonderful prayer of Paul. Help each one of us to take it very seriously. Even as we are going to continue our study from this book. Lord we pray that you bless, bless our time together. Minister to us in learning more precious lessons from the book of Colossians. Thank you for hearing us. Give us good night rest. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.